So here now for an exclusive interview on the story, Patricia Bogoyevich, Rod Bogoyevich's wife. Um, Patty, good to see you tonight. I know that you spoke with your husband today uh, from his prison. What did he say when he heard this news? Well, you know, he was, he was, and we are all so grateful that the president is thinking of us in this way. Um, but it's been such a long road for us, and we've been so disappointed so many times before, you know, by the court twice, um, by our, the president of our own party, we were disappointed by him. Um, so it's hard to even hope um, that our deal might be ending soon. But, you know, we know that President Trump is a kind man, and he's compassionate. He's always been kind to my family. He knows how important it is that my husband gets home to, to be a father to our daughters, that we can't help, you know, to be hopeful. Uh, your little girls were younger, obviously, um, as kids are, and they're now seven years older, and 20 and 13, I think, their ages are now. Um, well, well my, old, my older daughter is uh, going to be graduating from college this month from Northwestern University. I, yeah, I know your husband one's 15. Has, has missed a lot of that. And, and, you know, you wonder if why the president has become interested in this case now. And you think back to your husband being hauled out of your house in handcuffs, um, the involvement of, of Mueller and Comey in, in this case as well. Do you think that he's sensitive to this situation because of what he's going through? I, I, I see that. I see that um, the same people that did this to my family, the same people that, you know, secretly taped us and, um, and twisted the facts and perverted the law that ended up my husband in jail, um, you know, th these same people are trying to do the same thing that they did to my husband just on a much larger scale. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were emboldened. They took down a governor, and now they're trying, they've got their sights much higher. You know, I, I mean, we played the recording that was so famous and heard. I'm sure you've heard it more than you than you want to hear it. Um, people listen to that and they say, look, you know, he was trying to sell the Senate seat. Uh, President Obama was elected and he had a seat as governor that he could appoint to whoever he wanted. And he says, you know, I'm not going to give this thing away. Um, I want something for it. And they say, his critics, that that's pretty clear. And the judge seemed to agree when he t passed up on the opportunity to let him go in 2016. Well, I'm really glad you asked me about that because, you know, the interesting thing is, is that there were probably about 70 different audio tapes that we wanted to play at trial, but that were suppressed by the government. And if you heard exactly what he wanted for it, um, it would be a totally different story. I mean, all these conversations my husband had with his staff about wanting to get a roads bill passed um, in Illinois to put more people to work or more health care for um, families in Illinois, all these things. Um, that he had lined up that he'd wanted for the Senate seat, um, nobody ever heard. And so it, it is kind of frustrating when people hear that. You know, this whole se selling of the Senate seat, those charges were thrown out by the appellate court over five years ago. That centerpiece of their case um, was dismissed as political log rolling. Um, you know, you, I'll make your appointment if you appoint me to this. Yeah. That was deemed perfectly legal politics. I, I listened to a lot of those tapes today, and I, and I will say that a lot of the things that you mentioned were absolutely mentioned um, in, in those tapes. You know, in terms of the punishment fitting the crime, I think that's one of the biggest issues here. Your husband got 14 years for this. You know, what about fair sentencing? Is that a, a claim that you tried to make with the judge the last time around in 2016? And, and why was there no open ear for that, do you think? Right. I think that, you know, the... Um, Certainly, my husband's serving more time than any other governor it's ever served, but he's also serving more time than any other politician for charges that have to do with simply fundraising. You know, you have to remember there was no kickbacks to us, no fancy cars or trips or, you know, no use, misusing of our campaign um, funds, no personal enrichment of any kind. This was simply campaign contributions for his campaign fund. And so um, it is stark um, how... Um, uh, how unjust the sentence is, um, given especially that um, you know nothing ever happened. These were all actually all attempts. Nothing was ever even um, concluded. There were no contributions made or anything like that. You know, they had to and, step and, in and, yeah. and, and stop my husband and, and before anything happened. The, I mean, the, the judge uh, and the jury, would, the judge basically told the jury that they had to look at that attempt as basically as a done deal. Um, and it seemed like that was what the jury was convinced to do in the case. Um, I hope you'll come back and talk to us. And we're going to follow this, obviously. We'll see what the president decides to do. But very, obviously, an optimistic day for you and your family and what you've been fighting for. So, Patty, thank you. Good to see you tonight. Oh, thank you so much. You, you too.